Welcome to Allergen Academy. So as we do financial planning with our clients, um, one of the biggest questions that come up is the purchase of a home because it's usually the biggest purchase that we make in our lifetime, mm. okay? So unfortunately, we've come across people who, especially right before uh, real estate bubbles crash, burst, mm. et cetera, we've noticed that decisions were made during these times that maybe weren't the best because there was no real guidance on how yeah. should I buy a home? Well, another common one too is when people are about to have a baby. They just oh, have yes. this emotional sense that they have to buy a home before they have a baby. So sometimes they just hop into a home that may not be right for them. So we want to take a few minutes to explain some considerations, some factors, some equip you with some tools to help you make a better decision when it comes to buying your home. So Jason, let's jump right into it. Here's some considerations, you know, and again, uh, before you actually buy a home ideally, now people come to us at different stages, but ideally you have no more consumer mm. debt, okay? Uh, you have enough emergency funds, okay? That isn't touched okay mm -hmm. and you have enough to for down payment in addition to the emergency funds yeah. okay because i've seen people oh yeah i saved x amount i can use it to buy my home no 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 emergency funds should still stay in place mm -hmm. even after you purchase your home well i can tell you i learned this the wrong way or mm. the hard way um whereas when i bought my first home i had just got married i had a lot of pressure from my parents and people around me you don't own a home yet you know you should own a home you're just renting you're throwing money away and so i felt this you know overwhelming and, and by the by the way that housing prices were going up a lot and i felt like i was missing out mm. i had that fomo as they say um so we, we had to get into a house and and we got into a house at the absolute wrong time mm. in like 2006 in the peak of the you know of the real estate bubble we did it with a a horrible mortgage it was an interest only arm which you should stay away from and and you know that house and we had no emergency reserves oh my goodness. And, and we had still had consumer debt and so we got into that home we really and, and then naturally when you buy a home what happens oh you got to get furniture you know oh you got to fix like three or four things Everything in the home comes along and then cha-ching cha-ching yes. cha-ching much more money so you know starts going up all that's going on more credit card debt so that home became it wasn't a blessing it became a curse and and literally we sold that home 11 years after buying it still underwater on that home mm. and lost money the house actually went down in value over that 11 year period wow and so we learned the hard way um, what not to do right <laughs> and that's you know that's an important story because this is real life and you hear oh i only invest in real estate or this and that mm -hmm. yeah mortgages have i mean real estate has its cycles as well mm -hmm. historically yes long term it goes up but it's got its ups and downs 2008 yep. being one of them you know when we saw that but yeah. there are benefits Absolutely. to buying a home especially when you do it the right way yeah when you do it the right way you have no consumer debt you have emergency reserves and then you have additional savings uh for your down payment and you buy a home i mean then the benefits when once you buy the home is especially if you get the right mortgage which we're going to talk in a little bit it's a forced savings plan so you're putting money to that principal every month and right. that principal is going down which is building your equity mm -hmm. a lot of times too it acts as an inflation hedge right. so if there's inflation a lot of times your house price is actually going up as well similar to the rate but of your inflation. mortgage if you did the right one, it should yeah. stay the same. Yeah, or okay, your down. mortgage payment, <laughs> yeah. okay, should stay the same. Right, the payment, yep. And so, you know, rents might go up. So if you don't own a home, you're subject to whatever that happens. Mm -hmm. But if you have, a, if you locked in a good rate on a good mortgage, yep. You've locked that in. That's right. For your budgeting purposes. Yep. And like we said, that you know, proper, potentially the property can appreciate over time, and depending on which market you in, so, uh, you're in, sometimes it'll appreciate faster or not. Right. But that's not a guarantee. You right. know, like I told you my story through 2008, um, it went down quite a bit. Right. So, so here's some things to consider when you're buying a home because most people jason they may use a realtor which mm -hmm. is a good thing those mm -hmm. are professionals and they'll have to use a mortgage institution or mm -hmm. broker to you know to seek their approval but here's some things to be looking out for absolutely so you know the, the key thing here is you want to find a good location okay everyone here is location 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 that's the most important thing when buying a home right um, it, along with that even if you don't have kids um, that are going to school um, find an area try to find an area with good schools because if you ever go to try to resell that value you know that, that home that, that'll be a, a higher value if you have good schools so another little trick is to try to find a home that's in the lower end of the price range 
for that neighborhood. Okay, right. let's just say you find a neighborhood, and on average, the homes in that neighborhood are going for around four hundred thousand. But you can find maybe a smaller home or one that an older home that just needs some, you know, kind of some help with the lawn and and, and cleaning TLC. things up and some TLC. But you can find that for three hundred thousand. That is usually a better buy because over time that will be closer to the medium average of the homes in that neighborhood. Try not to buy a home on the higher the end. Most expensive the house so in the neighborhood. You don't want to buy the most expensive home, or you don't want to overbuild or remodel and, and you know make that home so that you know you'll never get that value out of it if you try to sell it after you putting in that much money in that particular neighborhood. Right. So, if you don't, if you can't afford just a single family home, um, something that you could look into is like a townhome or a condominium. Uh, but when you do that, make sure you also budget for monthly maintenance fees, and also know that there is a chance those month monthly maintenance fees could go up over time. Like homeowners association fees that yeah. tend to be higher. For That's those right. That too. Of buildings. Yep. Or if you're handy, um, you could try to find a fixer upper. Um, I've personally done that quite a bit uh, over time, but just be very cautious with major repairs. So when you go in and you buy the home, you get a home inspection. If there's major repairs, like if there's something, if there's structural issues um, with, with the foundation, or you see a lot of cracks in the walls and, and the house is you know, literally falling down, or it needs a lot of electrical or plumbing, or you know the roof is really old, you have to replace the roof as soon as you go in there. There. Not saying not to buy that one, but be very cautious with those types of homes that have those issues because those could be very costly to fix. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, very important, those are some practical tips. There's the financial considerations, mm -hmm. uh, and I think we're going to go into this, and we even have another video on affordability, mm -hmm. you know, calculator that we help people choose. Mm -hmm. Understand, you might get mixed messages here. So, oh, mm -hmm. you can afford this much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Afford is a relative term. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because afford means can you afford the monthly payment? Maybe, but at what cost or what expense? Yeah. Okay, we saw this a lot in 2008, mm. where people, oh, you qualify for you know a half a million dollar home, and meanwhile they're making minimum wage. You right. Know? Yeah. Um, so understand there's different parameters um, and motivations, if you will, for saying you can afford X mm. amount. You know, realtors, uh, mortgage brokers. You know, there's really good ones out there. Okay, mm. but the structure of their compensation is a percentage of what they sell you. Mm -hmm. So the higher your price and the higher your mortgage, the more they make. Okay, right. so I'm not saying that's necessarily uh, all realtors go by that, but it's a different perspective on saying what you can afford. That's right. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about affordability, Jason. Yeah. So a couple kind of guidelines of how much house you can afford. Okay, because we're we're you know I did this the wrong way personally, um, and you know we want to help people get into the right house for them that's going to allow them to not be house poor um, and allow them to continue to build wealth over time. Right. Um, and not to pay a, a, you know, a ton of interest over time. Right. Um, so, so when determining a price range, okay, remember that um, kind of a key thing here is you want to put down at least 10%. Okay? Um, however, we would prefer if you did 20%. Right. And the reason for that is there's something called personal mortgage insurance. Property mortgage insurance. Pro property mortgage ins insurance, yep. yep. So, and we'll get a little bit more into this on the other side, but the, the mortgage insurance, um, it, you know, if you don't put some money, additional money down, um, that, that can make that more expensive. Right. Um, and we're going to talk about that on another side. But the other thing is you want to focus on a 15 year mortgage and a 15 year fixed rate mortgage. Fixed. Okay. So, so stay away from um, what they call arms or adjustable uh, rate adjustable mortgages or, or, you know, interest only only mortgages, those types of things. And while most people will try to direct you into a 30-year mortgage and they're going to give you all types of convincing arguments of why you should do that to keep your payment low, you never know what's going to happen, you know, it, it, so, but if you stick to this guideline of a 15-year mortgage, you're going to be able to build wealth quicker over time. Yes, we understand you may not be able to get more house early on, mm -hmm. but that can be a good thing because it can avoid you from becoming house poor. That's right. Okay. So, and then as you do this properly over time, you will be able to sell that home, you know, maybe your, if it's your first home, or, you know, and get and have equity in it. And then when you go to buy your second home, then you can start stepping it up and getting a nicer home. Right. All right. So you want to keep your monthly house payment, which would include your principal, interest, taxes, insurance, and PMI to 30% or less of your monthly take-home income. Right. Okay. And we, we have a calculator, a mortgage affordability calculator 
calculator that kind of helps guide you along in this uh, area. And then we also have a mortgage comparison calculator. I would check both of those out. Um, you know, one shows you how much house you can afford. The other one is kind of comparing a 15-year to a 30-year mortgage. Correct. And obviously, the, the reason why we guide people to the 15-year uh, mortgage is that it saves you so much on interest. Right. I mean, it, it can save you, you know, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars in interest, right. especially over a lifetime. And you can build equity quicker, which means if you go around, if you turn around and sell your home, you know, after a few years, you can actually not be underwater and you can you can get you know some money back right. um, and a lot of times if you go with a 15 year versus a 30 year mortgage and you do and you can't put down that 20 percent then you, the PMI is less right so Okay, so just really quick here, as, as we're looking at comparing a 15-year to 30-year mortgage, just to kind of, and we actually have a calculator video that we can show you, or that you can see, uh, that you can really play around with these numbers, but just to hit, hit home the point of why a 15-year makes more sense than a 30-year mortgage, just giving you this example, this is a $270,000 mortgage, um, comparing a 15-year mortgage to a 30-year mortgage, the 15-year is at 3%, the 30-year mortgage is at 3.5%, mm -hmm. and you can see, even even though your payment is a little bit higher, $1,865 versus $1,200, the interest savings is $100,000 over the life of the loan. That's right. You know, on a $270,000 mortgage, you're going to pay $436,000 in payments on a 30-year mortgage, mm. um, which is a lot of money over time. So, you know, while the you know the monthly payment is going to be higher, it's not significantly higher than the 30-year. But the main thing is, is you save a ton on interest. Your goal is not to have the the lowest payment. Right. That's the way it's sold to you. Right. Your goal is to pay the least amount of interest and to build wealth over time. That's exactly right. So hopping on to the next slide, just to go a little bit more in depth of what private mortgage insurance is. PM, so when you don't put 20% down onto a mortgage, uh, the, the bank forces you to have private mortgage insurance, which protects the bank. Not right. you, okay? But you're paying for it. You're paying for it, but it's to, to protect the bank in case you can't make the payments on the home. Um, so typically, it is more expensive with a smaller down payment um, and longer terms. Uh, uh, so like if you get to a 30-year with very little down, it's going to be a more, uh, a more expensive PMI. Right. Now, uh, I've done this the wrong way in the past, like a lot of these lessons that, we've te that we teach. And I can just tell you out of experience, to get rid of that mortgage insurance, it is extremely difficult okay but the requirements a lot of times if it, a lot of times if it's a conventional loan is that you've had the mortgage for at least two years and the loan to value is below 80 percent right okay that's not the case with all types of loans but that is the case with a lot of them um, once you reach that point then you can go back to your bank and you can request them to take that off. I can tell you though that when I had to do that, it took me like seven or eight phone calls, lots of letters, and lots of work to get it off. And it was a part-time job for hmm. a few weeks. Okay, so it's not easy. Um, but you want to make sure that happens because depending on the size of that mortgage, I mean, that can be anywhere from 150, I've seen them high as $250 a month. That, that's just money you're throwing away. Right. You know, you're, you're getting no benefit to that. Okay. Right. Now, sometimes, like in, uh, in recent years, um, you, you, you have the house, your house value actually starts to appreciate really quick. Um, and maybe you reach that 80% LTV, not by paying it down, but by rather the, the actual property value going up in value. Right. And in that scenario, you may need to actually pay for an appraisal. Right. Okay, the, the bank will require you to pay for an appraisal to prove to them that you are, your, your loan is now 80% or LTV is below 80%. That's right. Okay. Now that's gonna vary per loan type. Yeah. Some loan a strict note the only way we dismiss it is if you've paid down yep. to that level because yep. they're afraid oh houses will go up or it could go down again mm -hmm. and then we're we're on the hook so it's very important that you understand what type of loan you have that's right now if you want to get a little bit creative and you have really good um, credit so there is another option to being able to put down 20 percent okay and not everyone can do this but if you have really good credit um, it, it, uh, sometimes it is a possibility so it's called uh, a, a 10 10 80 loan okay so if you have enough money to put down 10 percent and then you would get uh, a and then you get a force first mortgage and then the 
then you put, uh, or then you have a 10% second mortgage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 10% down, a 10% second mortgage, and then the first mortgage is for the 80% amount. Right. And that is a way um, that you could potentially avoid PMI. Right. Um, but if you do that, the second mortgage, a lot of time is at a variable rate. Right. Okay, so after you get that in place, your job is to knock that second mortgage out as quickly as possible to avoid interest rates going up. And a lot of times at a higher interest rate, so you want to probably pay that one down first. That's right. Sometimes it's second mortgage, sometimes it's a HELOC, mm -hmm. equity line of credit, very right. typical, which is variable. So mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a way to do 80, 10, 10. So 80 first, you put down 10. And because the first mortgage is the one that determines your PMI, mm -hmm. and it, oh, it's only 80, mm -hmm. you, you kind of circumvented yep. that. Doesn't apply to everyone. You have to have strong credit. It depends on how lending standards are. Mm -hmm. When they were strict, they weren't even allowing that. That's right. Okay, so it, it yep. varies, but it's, a, it's an option. That's right. Now, another thing, we're big believers in helping people be completely debt-free, right? And especially starting off with being consumer debt-free. Right. So what if you're trying to buy a home with no credit? Okay, so you know, if, you, if you've had no credit cards, you have no car payments, you may not have established credit. Um, well, it is doable, right. but it takes more work, okay? So it, you'll have to go through manual, a manual underwriting process, and a lot of times the bigger banks, uh, you know, the well-known banks won't do that. Right. But you'll get a lot of regional banks that actually will do it. Um, if you can show to them that, hey, I make enough money to be, able to, um, to be able to buy this home. Look, I have zero debt. I have a lot of emergency reserves. I have a certain amount to be able to put down, um, then it may take a little bit more work, but you can buy a home right. with no credit. Okay? Exactly right. So you'd have to be very intentional of finding an institution that does this manual underwriting mm -hmm. that will be open to not using the traditional automated calculations to see if you qualify. So why do we spend so much time on this conversation? Because again, it's one of the biggest assets and liabilities that we all mm -hmm. you know, take over during our lifetime. So. Because it's such a big decision, we want to equip you with the tools, thoughts, and considerations to help you make the right decision mm -hmm. and not necessarily make a lot of the mistakes that most of us make in this country. Mm -hmm. So we hope this helps and we look forward to seeing you soon.